What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today we are opening up a pack of dominaria obviously a fairly new set just in the last couple of years but a lot of really cool stuff in this set there were a lot of really awesome things that they did with this one and it was really cool as a return to the original plane of magic obviously dominaria it was really really cool so a lot of fun stuff uh obviously as always we're going to go through this as if it is a pack one pick one scenario uh, so we will do the best we can to figure out what our first round draft pick will be. As such, we'll go through every single card, and our first one here is Coldwater Snapper. It is a 4-5, four, 4-5, five, four, five, and a blue, and it has Hexproof. Uh, so normally, I don't like cards like this. Uh, Overcosted, low on the stats, however, Hexproof makes a huge, huge difference in Limited. Hexproof is very, very good. Um, granted, I don't think this is an amazing card. It's not first pickable, but it is actually really, really nice because targeted removal burn anything like that just doesn't work for it they're gonna have to sweep it away or they're gonna have to deal with like just straight up combat damage uh and so you can really do a lot with hexproof in general however obviously this is not the most amazing card ever don't think it's that great but just something to note there hexproof very very good and limited uh sergeant at arms is a two three for two and a white it has kicker uh, so as you play it, you can pay an additional two in a white, and then if you do, in this case, uh, you'll get two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens in addition to uh, the sergeant at arms. I think this is a perfectly okay three drop. I don't think it's amazing. Uh, I found it when I was drafting this to be a little bit uh, not a little bit underwhelming, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, a lot of times you just end up playing it on three, uh, and it's just a two three. And then at six, if you can play it for all six, you do get those additional creatures, but by turn six, you're getting a two, three, and then a couple one ones. It's not amazing. Um, it doesn't really help you dig out of any positions uh, unless you're just being overwhelmed with a board presence of little guys. In general, though, you're going to be outpaced just on power level. And so for that, this isn't the best, in my opinion. Uh, probably a little bit better than the cold water snapper, in my opinion, but in general, not very good. Uh, Skirk Prospector is a 1-1 one, one for 1 red. You can sacrifice a goblin to add 1 red to your mana pool. Uh, this is a really much more powerful, I would say, constructed card. Uh, it's not a great uh, 1 drop, in my opinion, in a limited deck. Now, obviously, if you end up with a bunch of goblins and maybe you have some kind of big red payoff, it's great in that instance. Uh, but you really have to have a high goblin count to make this worth it because, obviously... You could sacrifice itself and get a red mana that way, but that's not really ramping you like crazy. It's just kind of helping you out a little, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's it's fine, but not very powerful and limited. Not my favorite card. If you do happen to get a bunch of uh, goblin payoff cards or something like that, go for it. But I think otherwise, not really worth it. Uh, Feral Abomination uh, is a 5-5 five, five for 5 and a black, and it has Death Touch. Um... I've actually been really uh, impressed with this card in the core 2020 drafts that I've been doing on Arena. Uh, it's actually put in a lot of work just because Death Touch is so difficult to get around, honestly. In Limited, it does make things a little bit tricky on the opponent because no matter what they block it with, it's probably going to die unless it has First Strike or Double Strike or something along those lines. So it makes it really, really difficult to kind of dig around this card. Uh, a lot of times you'll be able to trade up with cards uh, if you have a lot of Death Touch stuff. This one, it's not amazing, but it is actually, I think, a decent card. Uh, I'm going to keep it with the Sergeant at Arms, though, I, again, I don't think either one's really first pickable, but uh, I do think it's an okay bomb for a black uh, black deck. Uh, Pierce the Sky is an instant for one and a green. It deals seven damage to target creature with flying. Uh, this is much more of a sideboard card, in my opinion. It's a very good one. Uh, if you find yourself up against a lot of flyers, you'll definitely, definitely want this. Very similar to Plummet. Uh, instant two mana, kill a, a flying creature. However, this is limited and it's only going to deal seven damage. Like, that's not going to be enough. Um, but uh, obviously, it is a little limited. You do have to keep that into account. But more than likely, it's a two mana instant speed removal spell for any flyer. And I like that a lot. It's really, really useful. But again... I would say it's more of a sideboard card. You don't necessarily, I mean, there will be flying creatures, obviously, but 
not always. Uh, it's not going to be the most prominent uh, archetype that you're going to run into in a set like Dominaria. Now, that's not to say you won't run into them. Maybe you can main deck one, but it's not a high priority pick in my opinion. Uh, Windgrace Alkalite, Alka Alkalite, excuse me, Alkalite, I believe, <laughs> uh, is a 3 2 for 4 and a black with flying. As we just said, flying. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard and then you gain three life. Uh, so far, I'm actually kind of in for this. Uh, so it's a 3-2 for 5, which is pretty expensive. However, the flying does make it a little more worth it. Uh, it's going to be evasive. It's hopefully going to be able to get in for some damage. But not only that, gains you a little bit of life and fills up your graveyard, which in some cases is exactly what you want to be doing. Now, obviously, in limited, it's harder to plan around that kind of thing. But uh, I do think that this is a very reasonable pick uh, in mid-pack, somewhere in that range. If you are finding yourself in a graveyard-focused deck, this is perfect. So I do like it for that. Uh, it's also just an okay card regardless. I mean, a 3-2 flyer for 5 isn't amazing, but uh, it can definitely get in for some damage if you just happen to play it on a board state where not many flyers are present. It's going to do some work. So I like this so far, I think, the best, honestly. It's not my favorite card by any means. Definitely not one that I want to first pick, but it's not terrible. Uh, Divination. Very classic card. Sorcery for 2 and a blue. Draw 2 cards. Very straightforward. Uh, this card's fine. It's not amazing. Uh, I I used to value draw spells pretty highly in limited, and sometimes, yes, you really, really want them. However, uh, if you use the quadrant theory to look at uh, card draw spells in general, in the early turns of the game, they're fine. In the mid game, they're okay, but if you're winning... It doesn't really matter. They're not helping you necessarily do too much. Obviously, they're digging you through your deck, which is good. But on their own, they're only doing that. They're not helping you play a new threat or anything like that. And then if you're losing, again, it's kind of the same thing. Yes, it can help you get to your answers. However, it's not an answer in itself. And you kind of want the answers, not the cards that help you kind of get to the draw stuff and all that. Yes, it's useful. But uh, I found that it's better to use that slot in your deck if you can to get a really, really effective spell. Obviously, draw spells are good. You, you want them, but not as amazing as I think everybody uh, tends to think in limited. So not a bad card. Definitely worth playing, but uh, not a first pick by any means. Not something I'm interested in. Uh, Mesa Unicorn is a 2-2 for one and a white with lifelink. Pretty straightforward card. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2, it's a bear, uh, with random upside and then it has lifelink. Obviously, lifelink is pretty good in draft. A lot of times, if you can just kind of stave off a few turns and gain a few life, you'll be able to get a few turns in the extra in the late game that you can maybe flip things into your favor or just stay ahead. It's a really, really good way to get there. But in general, it's just a 2-2. Two, two. It's not an amazing card, uh, not first pickable in my mind. Uh, Broken Bond is a sorcery for one and a green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, and then you can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Again, fantastic sideboard card. Definitely something that you'll want in sideboard. Uh, enchantments are pretty popular because of sagas in this set, uh, and so you'll probably find a, a need to, to actually have something like this uh, post-sideboard. But not always. Uh, there are a few artifact equipments, things like that as well. So you may find that you need this. If you do, it's a great option to have in the sideboard. But it's not great first pick. It's probably not good main deck. Uh, being able to put in a, a, a land from your hand onto the battlefield, if you can play this early enough, is fantastic. It's just going to help ramp you a little bit. Uh, but then also destroying, obviously, the artifact or enchantment is great as well. So good sideboard, not first pick. Uh, our first uncommon here is Wizard's Retort. It's an instant for one and two blue. Uh, it costs one less to cast if you control a wizard. Wizards being a very popular theme in here in uh, Dominaria. And then it's just counter target spell. Very straightforward counter spell. It's cancel that can become actual counter spell. It's basically the way it, it, it pans out. I find that it's really good to pick these up if you know you're going to be in the wizard's deck. If you don't, probably not as worth it. It's still a hard counter. Hard counters are okay in draft. I think there's a deck out there that really, really loves hard counters, and that's great. But they're not the best. I'd rather be a little more proactive than so reactive in draft. A lot of times your games are won on board, not necessarily through counters. Uh, and so for me, this isn't quite as high a priority uh, as finding the wizards to make it work. So I'd prefer having that first before taking this. Uh, Spore Crown Thalid is a 2-2 two, two for 1 and a green. Each other creature you control that's a fungus or a sapperling gets plus 1, plus 1. Now this is my kind of card. This 
is a little bit of a pigeonhole. It's going to put you into that fungus saprolin kind of token black green strategy. But that being said, this is a very good payoff for that deck. Uh, and I think it gives you a little more direction, but still is open enough that even if you end up with only a small number of those sapperlings, it's probably worth it. It's a 2-2 two -two for 2, so even at worst, it's just an on-curve 2-2, two -two, which is fine. Uh, if you get that upside as uh, buffing up some of your other creatures, fantastic. So, so far, definitely the card that I'm most interested in uh, just gives you a lot of direction and a really, really powerful threat uh, on turn 2. Uh, well, okay, but our rare, uh, Josu Vest, Lich Knight, this card's great. It's a 4, 5, 4, 2, and 2 black. Already really, really good. Uh, naturally, it has a menace, so it's also going to be really difficult to block, uh, at least effectively. It does have a kicker cost, so if you want, you can play it with the kicker cost of 5 and a black, and then if you do, uh, if it was kicked, get 8, 8, 2, 2 black zombie knight creature tokens also with menace. Uh, this is a game-ending kind of card. Obviously, on turn four, it's just a good threat regardless. Uh, but if you can pay that kicker cost, if you can get up to that, that's a lot of mana. But if you happen to get there, uh, this is definitely, definitely a game-ending card. Just so much power on board. So difficult to block as well. Just makes it very, very difficult. Oftentimes, you'll, you'll win on the next turn with a card like this. So absolutely the card that I want so far or I guess I should say just out of this pack we do have uh two more cards here I forgot we have a foil here and then uh our uh legendary creature uh Voltaic Servant uh, is a one three for two mana of any color at the beginning of your end step you untap target artifact there actually are a few synergies with this card uh that I I noticed in drafting uh not something that I ever shot for when I was playing uh when I was drafting this set but you can actually get some really cool stuff out of it uh, Traxos in particular, I believe, is really one of the big synergies there, uh, but not a card you first pick at all. Uh, it's definitely something that you just find uh, later on that synergy may be worth it. I, eh, it's okay. Uh, Whisper, Blood lit lit Lithar Liturgist? I, I'm very bad at names, guys. Okay, it's a 2-2 for three and a black. You can tap it, sacrifice two creatures, and return target creature card from the graveyard to your battlefield. Uh, again, this is some graveyard recursion. We saw that with the, uh, the three, two flyer as well. Uh, and that kind of enables this and it's kind of a cool little synergy, not necessarily like a, a card that you have to have to make that stuff work, but it is really cool to be able to ditch stuff into your graveyard and then bring it back with something like this. A little bit more of setup required for that and then limited that can be very difficult, but if you can get it fantastic so uh with that being said though it's a very very clear josu vest this card is fantastic it's absolutely the one that i would pick i don't think there's any there's going to be much disagreement there but feel free to let me know in the comment section if you happen to but if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below and as always please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content one last thing uh the next episode coming out tomorrow on tuesday uh, is going to be our 300th episode. I have a really cool pack of Lorwyn that I'm going to be opening for that. Uh, very, very rare that we open a, a pack of Lorwyn just because it's so expensive, but I figure we pull out something special for this one. So I'm really excited about it. Hopefully you guys are too. Definitely tune in tomorrow to see that pack opening. But with that said, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.